Starfire, this alien princess is a fan favorite in Teen Titans. Do you remember the Teen Titans? Yes, I am talking about the widely adored teenage superhero group that many fondly remember seeing on their TV screens. DC has given fans various different versions of the Teen Titans, and among the plethora of heroes that have had the privilege of being team members, one flame-haired badass beauty has definitely stood out over the years, Starfire. Starfire has often been called the pretty one, but let me tell you today that she is a lot more than just a pretty face. Don't worry, Star. She won't get away with this. No, she will not. Starfire, also known as Corianders, is a more complex character than the Titans would have their fans believe. From the full scale of her abilities to her unique home planet, there are more exciting and interesting things about her. Recently, many people have become even more curious about the Tamarinian princess after the premiere of DC's Titans, and in this video, I'll tell you everything that there is to know about this superheroine. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This this is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The first comic book appearance. While many Starfire fans remember her from the Teen Titans series in 2003, she has been in the DC Universe for much longer. Marv Wolfman and George Perez created the character in 1980, and it was in DC Comics Presence issue number 26 that she made her first appearance. They needed new members for the Teen Titans, so the two men came up with the idea of creating an exotic alien princess who was both gorgeous and tough. Perez compared her to Red Sonya from Outer Space, and she was drawn with glistening orange skin, lengthy red hair, revealing armor, and penetrating green eyes. In this book, the Teen Titans make an appearance in the second story, and as usual, they are busy saving the world. We watch as Robin investigates a hostage situation in front of Star Labs in New York. However, he feels dizzy and when he looks up, Wonder Girl shows up to assist him and he's no longer dealing with the hostage situation, but is actually in a Titans meeting. The Titans introduce themselves to Robin one by one. However, it seems like he knows none of them at all and can't remember who these people are. It is during this time that Starfire comes in and introduces herself and is referred to as Golden Girl. However, the reunion doesn't last long as Raven warns them of an imminent disaster as she shows them visions of a scientist who had opened a gate to another dimension, and that had resulted in a dangerous organism entering into Earth, thus posing a threat to all of mankind. They thus rush to find and eliminate this threat, and while Starfire can't fly, Robin cannot, so she carries him bridal style. No wonder these two were together at a point in time. They find the giant, hulking, protoplasmic being, and before they can even launch an attack, Raven's soul is captured by the entity, making it all the more important to defeat it. As they started attacking, Robin feels dizzy again and is back in the hostage situation, only to be transported back to the Teen Titans, and it turns out both the situations were related and Robin was being transported through time, between the present and the future. However, what is important is Starfire's role in this story. As they launch an attack on the globe-like entity, it fled and they finally found it in a scientist's lab, hanging in the passageway it had come through. Starfire realized that her star boats had an impact on it physically and started bombarding it with them. The scientists, however, told Robin that the only way to defeat the being was to send it back where it had come from, and Starfire took on the responsibility of pushing it through the portal as the rest of the Titans evacuated the room as it had to be sealed. The reason behind this was the fact that Starfire did not need any oxygen to stay alive and thus would be the only person equipped to push the entity out and survive the ordeal. Thus, in all practicality, Starfire saved the day and this marked the beginning of countless appearances of this flamed hair hero. No! Ah! A Brief History of Starfire while Starfire was born into royalty, her life was not a bed of roses and very early on she suffered betrayal at the hands of her very own sister. Her birth name was Coriander and she was the second of three children born to her parents on the planet Tamaran, which is located 26 light years away from Earth. Starfire's people, unlike other well-known fantasy races, are primarily motivated by emotions rather than logic and their powers also depend on the state of their emotions. She was a princess and Commander, her older sister, was the first in 
line for the throne, but she was crippled by a childhood illness that took away her Tamaranian capacity to convert ultraviolet light into flight energy. As a result, she was deemed unfit to be queen, and Coriander was chosen to succeed her. When both sisters were sent to train with the legendary warlords of Akara, the vengeful commander bolted, siding with the Citadel and betraying not just her sister but her homeland in the process. The Citadel successfully invaded Tamaran thanks to Commander's information, and King Myander was forced to hand Coriander over to the Citadel to secure peace and curb violence. The sibling rivalry doesn't end there, and if you thought your sibling hates you, this is on a whole new level. Coriander and Commander were both handed over to a race of people called the Scions for experimentation. After facing six years of suffering and sexual abuse post the evasion of their homeland, the Scions, who were primarily sadistic scientists, conducted a lethal experiment on both sisters to see exactly how much power their Tamaranian bodies could absorb before blowing up due to the overload. During the process, Loyalist forces that answered to Commander's attack the Scion shipped an attempt to save her, and while the Scions were sidetracked dealing with them, Coriander managed to break free using her newly gained ability called Star Bolts, which are catastrophic blasts of solar energy that she had attained through the experimentation. She then decided to free Commander, who was still soaking up energy against her better judgment. Oftentimes, movies will have this big reunion scene of scorned siblings coming together after one saves the other, but that does not happen in this case. Commander, on the other hand, was less than grateful, striking her sister with the same but much greater starboat power and restraining her for future execution. Coriander managed to flee and eventually made her way to Earth, where she was aided by the Teen Titans. She chose to stay with the team and assumed the name Starfire, quickly developing a romantic connection with Dick Grayson, better known as Robin, who was the team's leader at the time. Thus, she spent a large part of her life struggling against tyranny, living in prison and carrying immense burdens before she came to Earth and became known as the flame-haired ass-kicking superhero that we all know and love. I'm so sorry, Rachel. Starfire in the TV series Titans. On October 3rd, 2018, the first episode of the live action television series Titans premiered at New York's Comic Con before premiering on DC Universe on October 12th. Starfire makes her first appearance in this episode when we meet a young woman named Cory. Cory Anders awakened in Austria with no recollection of her identity. All she remembers is that she made some powerful enemies, and all of it appears to be connected to one person, Rachel Roth. This first look establishes the tone for the rest of the story as it becomes a quest for her memory and, in essence, her identity. Corey, talk to me. In the live action series, it is shown that Coriander was born on the planet Tamaran on December 14, 1991, as the royal family's firstborn. Her father needed an heir to pacify rebellion during a period of civil unrest, so she was conceived during that time. However, in this version of Coriander's story, she was never born with the royal powers of fire, which is seen as a sign of a royal's natural right to the crown in Tamaranian culture. Despite this, her father instructed that she be falsely proclaimed as the legitimate heir apparent to the Tamaranian throne and confirmed that she was born with the gift of fire. In order to go ahead and do damage control when her younger sister Commander was birthed with the gift of fire, King Myanders commanded that the newborn abilities be magically transferred to Coriander, while the true nature of the sisters' abilities remained unknown. This was done to make sure that no one in the future could ever question the throne and his family's legitimacy. Coriander was adored and became far more successful than her sister, much to Commander's chagrin, fueling fierce competition and disdain between them as they grew older. Coriander was eventually considered worthy enough to take on a historic prophecy recorded in the sacred book Goran Des Dyer, which roughly translates to Death of Worlds. She was assigned the task of preventing the return of Trigon, an interdimensional demonic warlord who would swallow up the universe's life-sustaining planets in a fiery shadow, including her home world, Tamron. She was given the codename Starfire and given the quest of traveling to Earth to secure Trigon's only portal to her realm. His half-human daughter, Rachel Roth, codenamed The Raven, Cory was promised that she would become the new ruler of Tamron once the mission was completed. And this brings us right back to the happenings of the first episode. This is definitely a completely different story if compared to Starfire's comic book origins. However, it is not uncommon for comic book characters and heroes who grace both pages of comics and our big screens to often have different origin stories. However, you're probably thinking, if this mission was so important and the fate of her home world rested on it, how did she forget everything? 
Well, she changed her name and went undercover as Corey Anders, claiming to be from California and dressing in rather unusual attire after arriving on Earth. She was an alien after all, so I'll let this one slide. She then went to St. Paul's Covenant in late 2016 in the hopes of finding Rachel, but she was unsuccessful. She also began a series of updates on her ongoing Rachel Roth investigation, the most recent of which was documented on November 6, 2017. Corey began operating in Vienna, Austria a year later at the behest of Konstantin Kovar, a sketchy man and crime lord. Corey pretended to collaborate with him in order to track down Rachel's whereabouts. However, as luck would have it, she was supposedly exposed by Kovar's men one fine day, and she awoke as the sole survivor of a horrible car accident with no recollection of who she was. In search for answers, she met Robin and the rest of the Teen Titans, and the rest is history. The series follows them on an adventure in Starfire's quest to regain her memory, find out who she was, and save those she had to. In the crisis counseling, where is Alfred when you need him? The secrets behind Starfire's power. Starfire has been shown to have a plethora of different powers in the various appearances that she has had all across mediums. As far as the live action series goes, her powers are as follows. Corey has a Tamaranian physiology that is unlike anyone else's. Even her royal family members who share amazing physical prowess, endurance, accelerated healing, and the capacity to retain and project solar radiation. Corey possesses superhuman strength as a result of her Tamaranian physiology, and she can easily easily incapacitate beings of lesser or similar strength. Her incredible strength enables her to inflict substantial bodily harm on opponents and launch them into the air with a single strike. Corey was also capable of breaking a metal chain apart from simply by pulling on it with both hands during her fight with Deathstroke, despite Deathstroke's enhanced strength. She is also more durable and physically capable than any human. She has an inhuman resistance to direct collisions, as well as temperature and pressure extremes. Her physical state has improved to solar levels as her body absorbs solar energy without causing harm or exhaustion to her body. She has a regenerative healing factor and, like the majority of Tamaranians, the ability to make her eyes glow green. She has demonstrated this ability on numerous occasions. Cory, unlike the rest of her species, can generate and manipulate blue energy which she manifests as powerful star bolts and levitates from the ground. This is her signature ability. Cory has the ability to manipulate energy in order to create barriers that she can change to as required for self-defense. Cory can also levitate as she is capable of lifting herself into the air as her abilities develop, indicating that she may be able to fly. Cory has psychic dreams that can sometimes send her into trances similar to sleepwalking, such as the ones that led her to her sister, who was telepathically calling out to her. This is an ability over which she has no control. Even while amnesiac, Cory is an expert in self-defense and an extremely competent unarmed combatant. Despite their surprise attack on her, she was capable of embolishing multiple armed officers with minimal effort and simultaneously dominating both of the nuclear siblings on an equal footing. Cory was able to fight Deathstroke on an equal footing, preventing many of his punches. Muay Thai, Aikido, Tai Chi, Krav Maga, Kali and Kung Fu appear to be part of her fighting style. Apart from this, she is also a skilled investigator and a level-headed leader. Now, for some of the funnier facts that were mentioned in the Titans animated series, she can learn languages by interacting with other people physically. She's been known to learn foreign languages by kissing people, despite the fact that she claims she can do it via any physical contact. Pretty neat, eh? She has nine stomachs and does not require oxygen to survive, considering she is an alien princess that probably checks out. The secret to her insane power power can thus be traced back to her roots as a Tamaranian physiologist. They will be found, Robin. You must have faith in your... Robin? Her relationship with Dick Grayson and Jason Todd. Starfire's relationship with these two men have always aroused the interest of the audiences. As far as her relationship with Dick Grayson goes, during their adolescence, Starfire and Nightwing had deep feelings for each other. In fact, they were happily engaged and all set to get married at one point, but Raven went rogue and ended up getting into an altercation with her fellow Titans, which resulted in their wedding being called off. This violent incident served as a wake-up call for the two, and they realized they weren't the right fit for each other much to the dismay of fans who love seeing them together. Even though they are no longer together, it is implied that Coriander has feelings for Nightwing. However, Jason Todd is the one she ends up with, so far at least. After the events of Flashpoint altered the timeline, Starfire joined forces with the Red Hood and Arsenal to form the Outlaws. Roy and Starfire have a long-term sexual relationship. 
While Roy thought she was dating Jason, it was later revealed that they were only friends because Jason was the first person she had only known as a friend. Despite the fact that her relationship with Roy appeared to be unromantic, the two have begun dating. Many fans also worship the couple because of their electric chemistry. It is interesting to note here that not only has she been in a romantic relationship with one Robin, but she has actually been romantically involved with two of them because the Red Hood had assumed the role and title of Robin at one point. Talk about awkward. Lastly, Starfire has always been an integral part of the Teen Titans team, and while she is usually a team player, she isn't always a bystander or one who takes orders. In some comics and animated films, she has been the protagonist. She's arguably the team's oldest, friendliest, and most experienced member, so it's only natural that she take the reins. Thus, she is a formidable force and it doesn't hurt anyone that she is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. With that, we come to the end of this video. What do you think of Starfire? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Sister, although you did betray and attack me, it was still very nice to see you.